Carador Ghost Chieftain versus Zergo Bell Striker. Hmm, that hand isn't particularly great. We've got a tutor that we can cast. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep that. We're up against a really fast deck in Zergo Bell Striker, but we do have a Sack Outlet and Grave Pact. If we can get into something like a Grave Crawler, that would be really good. But we'll go in for the Sol Ring first. And then throw it over to our opponent. I don't think we're going to go for Enlightened Tutor on our upkeep, but I will keep it there anyway. Zergo Bell Striker is a 1 mana 2-2. Two, two. It can't block creatures with power 2 or greater. And it has a dash cost of 2. Which means it enters with haste and then is returned to its owner's hand at the beginning of the end step. And yeah, this is definitely a rush build from our opponent. So one board wipe might really mess their plans up here. Carador Ghost Chieftain is 8 mana in Abzan for a 3-4. It costs 1 generic less per creature in our graveyard. And we can cast a creature spell from our graveyard once a turn. <laughs> and would you look at that, a Grave Crawler. So that tempts me towards... Well, we need another zombie in play to switch that on. But I might be tempted into a Skull Clamp onto the Enlightened Tutor. So let's go for Bloodstained Mire. This can get us into a... Oh, what do we want? A white and black source, I think. We can go Grave Crawler into Phyrexian Altar. And that is two-thirds of the combo established. There's a couple of zombies in here that drain our opponent every time a zombie dies. And Grave Crawler can be recast from the graveyard for a black mana if we control a zombie. And then Phyrexian Altar can sacrifice a creature for a mana of any colour. So we sack the Grave Crawler for black with Phyrexian Altar. And just continue to keep recasting it and sacking it. Cast it and sack it, etc. and so forth. Uh, this is two damage to a target and scry. We might as well get our... Phyrexian Mana Altar from the Grave Crawler in response to that. The Monastery Swift Spear will get the plus one plus one, but I don't know. I think this fizzles now. I don't think they get the scry from that. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So let's go for Enlightened Tutor. And that'll save us some mana next turn. And I think just to help the chance along... Oh, there's a Metallic Mimic actually, isn't there? That could enter as a zombie. And then we could get Grave Pack going. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, actually. Metallic Mimic will give us infinite uh, death triggers with the Phyrexian Altar. And then if we can get Grave Pact into play, I think that's a good idea. Unfortunately, Red is quite good at getting rid of artifacts, but it seems as though our opponent is just playing a Burn Slash Rush deck. I'm going to go for the... Grave Pact here. And then we'll just have to hope that our opponent doesn't wheel. Because we didn't have enough mana to get down the Mimic as well. Grave Pact, by the way, is whenever a creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. So we can wipe our opponent's board with infinite death triggers next turn. If we can get our Metallic Mimic to stick. They might have removal for it, which would throw a spanner in the works for us. All right, that's really good. Our opponent tapping out there. I think they just dealt... Yeah, they dealt three damage to us. Uh, we'll go in for the Unholy Grotto, just in case our opponent exiles graveyards or something. We can put the Grave Crawler back on top. We name Zombie with the Metallic Mimic. And that allows us to cast the Grave Crawler out of our graveyard because the Metallic Mimic is now a Zombie. And it enters with a plus counter on it as well, thanks to the Metallic Mimic. And then we sack Grave Crawler for a black mana. And that will force our opponent to get rid of a creature. Then we use the floating black mana to recast the Grave Crawler. And we can do this forever. But we'll only do it until our opponent doesn't have any creatures in play. They can recast their commander next turn, but they'll have to tap out to do it. 
So we will just leave it like that. And we can sacrifice Gravecrawler at instant speed. And then if our opponent did decide to go to Exile Graveyards, we could put the Gravecrawler back on top with the Holy Grotto. That's black and tap. Put a zombie from your graveyard on top of your library. A Hellspark Elemental from our opponent. And it's not worthy that they can unearth that. And it's the beginning of combat, so I say we just sacrifice the Grave Crawler, forcing them to get rid of the Hellspark Elemental. And that way we don't have to take three points of damage. Oh, and a Whip of Erebos is quite good against, in fact, it's very good against a Burn deck. So let's get our Grave Crawler back out. And then it's Whip of Erebos, this will give our creatures lifelink. And we'll gain a couple of life from the Metallic Mimic. And hopefully start trying to get our opponent's life total down to zero. I'm probably going for Carador next turn. Just as a little bit of insurance, if they do manage to burn out the Metallic Mimic, then we can uh, replay it next turn. No, but our opponent gives up with that. Uh, that's the trouble with burn decks. If you don't win within the first few turns, it's not likely that you're going to win. We would have drawn into... well... <laughs> Yep, that definitely would have thrown a spanner in the works for our opponent. Liliana Dreadhorde General will take over a game all by itself. So there was a little snippet of Carador, Ghost Chieftain, Zombie Tribal. And beating out the Rush deck, Zergo Bellstriker. I don't know how long this game was, I don't think it was very long, so we will just get another one underway. Carador, Ghost Chieftain. Versus Tulsimir, Friend to Wolves. Being treated to see what this is like in 1v1. I don't think I've played it in 1 versus 1. Uh, we can keep that. I'd be tempted... Yeah, if we were on the draw, I'd be tempted to keep that hand, not play anything, and then discard a Grave Titan to animate dead. Then we could go Enlightened Shooter into a Sol Ring or a Mana Crypt and recast Grave Titan with animate dead. Anyway... We're not going to be doing that because we don't have any means of discarding here. So let's just play the Command Tower and decide if we want to Enlighten Tutor or not. Tulsimir, Friend to Wolves, is a 5 mana Celestia Commander. Enters with a 3 3 Celestian Wolf. And when a wolf enters under your control, you gain 3 life and that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Carador Ghost Chieftain, this is a zombie tribal build, 8 mana in Abzan, for a 3-4. It costs 1 generic less to cast per creature in our graveyard, and during each of our turns we may cast 1 creature from our graveyard. So I think we're going for a tap land from the Verdant Catacombs, and yeah, I think we will Enlightened Shooter in this case. Seeing as how... We have an Animate Dead in hand, it might be worth going for a Mesmeric Orb, actually. That will start milling us out, and our opponent. And there's a Tundra Wolves, a one-mana wolf, one of the very few one-mana wolves. And then we'll have a look with Enlightened Tutor. I think we're going for Mesmeric Orb here, but I'm not too sure. Let's have a look. We can get an Enchantment or Artifact on top of our library. Yeah, I think... Oh, we could go for Phyrexian Arena, actually. Yeah, I quite like Phyrexian Arena, so we'll go for that instead. We can actually cast that this turn. At the beginning of our upkeep, we will lose a life and draw a card to Phyrexian Arena. So that's two cards a turn for us. And if they have any enchantment or artifact removal, it's likely that this will eat it. We do have some artifacts that we want to... Or artifacts and enchantments that we want to keep in play. Mainly the ones that we saw last game in Grave Pact and Phyrexian Altar. And there's a Witch Stalker from our opponent, that's a 3-3 with Hexproof. Whenever an opponent casts a blue or black spell during your turn, you get a plus counter onto it. We're not going to be doing much of casting spells during our opponent's turn. We do have some instants that we want to cast during our opponent's turn, but not many. We'll draw a couple of cards here to the Phyrexian Arena. Okay, that is a Sol Ring, so that's pretty good. Yeah, we're just shy of Grave Titan, unfortunately. 
The thing to do here really is to vindicate one of these white lands, but I don't really want to do that against my opponent. Uh, we can't cast Carador yet, so we'll just have to leave it like that, I think. And Adaptive Automaton comes down as a Wolf Lord. So that's six damage we're taking now. And there's a 4-4 Witch Stalker and a 2-2 with First Strike. I think we're going in for Grave Titan next turn. We're going to lose enough life from Phyrexian Arena as it is. Well, we could set up with a Metallic Mimic. A Metallic Mimic would leave us with four mana. We can Vindicate onto the Adaptive Automaton. Yeah, I think we go for that. This is a little bit greedy, but it does make the Grave Titan... Oops. Zombies come out with a plus one, plus one counter onto them. Uh, that would enter as a 4-3, wouldn't it? Which means the Automaton and the Tundra Wolves wouldn't want to swing into that. Problem is, if they drop a land, then they're going for Tulsimir, and then they'll be able to fight something and probably get rid of Metallic Mimic, actually. So yeah, I think we get some power off the board while we can. And we'll go for the Adaptive Automaton. Like I say, could have gone for uh, Vindicate onto the uh, one of the dual lands here, but I really don't want to go for that because I have a feeling that our opponent would scoop if we started blowing up lands. Fingers crossed we don't see a land drop here. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to cast their commander, which is great for us. Alright, but we will see one next turn, so I'm glad I didn't go after my opponent's land now. Swinging in again with both wolves, it'll just be 4 damage this time, but we can't block because this has first strike, so that will kill our metallic mimic. But we're really about to have an explosive turn here. Alright, that's good, getting into another green source. Let's go for our Grave Titan. Not only is it a 6-6 with Death Touch, but it also generates lots of zombie tokens for us. Uh, are there any Flash Wolves for 2 mana? There's a Flash Bear for 2 mana, but I don't think there's a Wolf, so... Let's just go for it. We can always animate Dead on the Metallic Mimic, although I'd rather not. And we get the first two points of damage onto our opponent. And I think we're looking at... Yeah, probably a new Scrap mob next turn. That enters with five plus counters on it, and whenever a player casts a spell, we remove a plus counter from it, and create a 2-2 zombie creature. That will actually enter with six plus counters on it, thanks to the Metallic Mimic. And then each zombie will enter with a plus counter on it as well, just like these Grave Titan zombies here. Alright, but our opponent, instead of going for their commander, has gone for a Jani the Great Hearted. They can put a plus counter and a loyalty counter on each creature and planeswalker they control for minus two. Or they can just plus up to gain some life there. Yep, they went for the counters. So that makes it difficult for Grave Titan to swing him. But what we could do is try and have them double block and then reanimate it with Animate Dead. Yeah, I think that would be a good play. I think if we swing in at their Ajani, they'll really want to protect it. Oh, and a Liliana Dreadhorde General is very good. So as a Primeval Titan, that can get us into Gaia's Cradle and... What's the other one? Uh, Cabal Coffers. Hmm, we've got some stuff to do here. I think I'm going to go for the Liliana. Uh, and then we go... Let's see what our opponent... Let's see what they block like here, actually. I was going to have Liliana have everyone sack a couple of creatures. But because we've got the Animate Dead in hand, I want to see if they... Either chump block or gang up on the Grave Titan. All three creatures will die here if they do double block. And more 3-3 three, three zombies for us. Okay, it looks like they are just allowing us through to Ajani. So in that case, we will sack a couple of creatures. 
we'll sack the summoning six zombies and have our opponent sack the two wolves. And this will draw us a couple of cards thanks to Liliana's top ability, the static one. Whenever a creature we control dies, we draw a card. Liliana, Dreadhorde Champion, is really, really good. Alright, so I think we just go in for another zombie here. In the Graveyard Marshal. That's pretty much just a 3-2 for 2 mana. We're not really ever going to use the ability of exiling a creature from our graveyard, I don't think. Now, our opponent could do with a board wipe here. Uh, we don't have any creatures in play, so... The Carador won't cost us any less to get it out, but it's also... There's not really much use in casting it if we don't have any creatures to recast from the graveyard anyway. And my opponent said that they've uh, seen me play on the EDH Lounge. So that's, uh, yeah, we've got a fellow EDH Lounge fan here. That is, Joyra is my co-pilot. And the wolf is going to fight our graveyard marshal there. So we will draw a card, thanks to Liliana, Dreadhorde Champion. She's only been out of turn and we've already drawn three cards with her. All right, getting into a lot of lands here for some reason. So why not go for the Urborg? And then we can get down Grave Titan and get Cabal Coffers and Gaia's Cradle. And that is all the mana we will ever need, assuming that we hold on to our swamps and creatures. Primeval Titan allows us to search for a couple of lands and put them straight into play. By far the best Titan, although... The black one is my favourite. Uh, let's go for the Cemetery Reaper, just to get a buff onto our zombies. And then we'll create a zombie with Liliana, and we will swing in with some stuff. Going to go in with everything except the Metallic Mimic. And we get some more zombies. Okay, our opponent said they misclicked there. I They were tapped out, so I assume what they wanted to do was block with Tulsimir there. Uh, yeah, but they won't be able to recast Tulsimir anyway. Maybe they have a Mana Crypt in hand or an Ancient Tomb, something like that. But it's a board wipe they're after here, really. So if they're going to wipe the board, it would make sense that they block some damage with Tulsimir. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. And going for a Rot Wolf, that sounds like the Infect one. Uh, when creatures dealt damage by Rot Wolf die this turn, you can draw a card. They can go after the Metallic Mimic there, and that will kill it. It'll also kill the Rot Wolf, though. But that will draw them a card. Uh, is it a May ability, the fight? Oh, it's up to one target creature, so they chose not to fight with it. Well, we can go wide on them next turn. All right, back round to our turn. We draw a couple of cards again with Phyrexian Arena. Glad I went for that at the beginning of the game because it's gotten us into a lot of stuff throughout the course of the game. We'll go for the Phyrexian Tower. And then we have 20 damage from the zombies alone. Oh, wow, and there's a, one of the new zombies from War of the Spark. All we're doing here is just turning everything sideways. And we'll just have to get through the Titan triggers quickly. Okay, they are making a wolf with the Celestia key rune. But that is tapped, so they won't be able to block with it, unfortunately. We'll just say yes to Primeval Titan and throw anything into play very quickly. And as quickly as the client will allow us. And then we're through to blocks and damage, and I think we've got our opponent here. I don't see what they can do with no mana. And there go the blocks. We get a bunch of damage through with our creatures, because we're going wide here. Our opponent has been a very good sport here. And again, they are a friend of the EDH lounge. And anyone who's a friend of the lounge is a friend of mine. So if you decide to come along and watch this video, uh, Joyra is my co-pilot, then make yourself known in the comments section and we can all have a bit of fun talking about different games and commanders and stuff like that, get a good conversation on the go. 
Uh, Tulsimir, friend to wolves. I said this during my multiplayer game of him. Uh, he needs more support in the wolf area. It's the same with the new bear tribal commander. What is that one called? Ayula? I think it's called Ayula. There aren't many bears and there's a hell of a lot of bears missing from uh, Magic Online as well. So it's going to be even more difficult to make a deck out of that. But I intend to attempt it anyway. Yeah, Tulsimir just doesn't have enough support with wolves, so I hope they print a lot more wolves and bears in the future. We're getting some changelings with Modern Horizons, so uh, I'm recording this before Modern Horizons is released, but I don't know when you'll be seeing it. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this new Abzan Carador Ghost Chieftain Zombie Tribal deck. Let me know what you think of it. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.